Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm talking about picking out your colors and your color palette for your pieces. This is something that I have a few different techniques going into and different things that I think about and different tricks that I can use to make sure that everything has more of a cohesive look to it. It, it is something that I think a lot of us have a love-hate relationship with, me included, where when it goes well, it feels incredible and awesome when you can achieve that emotion that you want in your colors. But when it ends up being a struggle and you can't figure out what you want to do with it and nothing feels right, that can be so incredibly frustrating. So, so let's just dive right in. So usually when it comes to picking out colors for a piece, I like to start off with obviously thinking of the mood that I want for the piece, or maybe that's not so obvious, but, but I like to look at it and think, okay, what, what do I want the, the viewer to feel when they're looking at this piece? So this one specifically is just a nice festive witch sitting there in kind of a spooky atmosphere is what I wanted to go for it. So of course there are so many variations of color that you can go with this, but I, I knew that that was at least the, the feeling that I wanted. So I just sat down with my, my palettes of paints and I started playing with different colors and I, I gravitated towards this like yellowy green kind of a color and I, I loved it. It was really spooky feeling. And then I started dropping in some other greens that leaned a little bit more on a true green side or a cooler green color. And then having those mingled together, I was really excited with those results. And that's really kind of the, the basis for the colors for this piece is I, I just, I had the mood and I played with colors until I found one atmospheric one that I thought would really nail the look that I wanted. I also really like that because I want it to feel Halloween and to have some specific Halloween colors, but I didn't want everything to be black and orange only or to be really on the nose necessarily. So I wanted to incorporate other ones and this like kind of a slime green almost. It is a color that's incorporated a lot in Halloween things, but it's not specifically Halloween. And that, that allowed me to expand on the atmosphere that she was in and that environment while still keeping it very in theme. So like I said, that's kind of how I like to jump off with it is that I, I get that one singular color and then I like to move outward from that and then make sure that everything plays well with that initial color. And because that color that I had planned out was basically the entire background, it meant that there was a lot of space that was dedicated to that. So it was a little bit easier to make sure that everything was tying in with that color. I, I also knew that I wanted her dress to be something that did feel specifically festive. I wanted it to be this orangey color. So I tested out a few different variations of it leaning more red or more yellow. And I found that with it a little bit more on the yellow side, it tied in better with the background where it felt a little bit more like she was in that environment where it was kind of glowing this orange color. So so yeah, that's that's kind of the breakdown of how I, I work with color is that I, I kind of expand outward from that initial color. So, so I, I start picking things and figuring things out. In my color comp, I originally had her hair much lighter and as I was painting it, it just ended up being a little bit more of a mid-tone, which I would have preferred if it had stayed lighter just for the sake of values being stronger and more striking. So that was one thing that in my original plans, if I had stuck to it, I would have preferred. In that little color comp, I also actually did the black of her cape and her hat more of like a purple black. And as I was working on the final, I decided to omit that and be a little bit more limited in the colors that I was using so that it would focus on the orange and the green. And it is so incredibly helpful to have a little color comp that you can work off of, even for little pieces like this. I don't always do it, but when I don't, I always wish that I had before I'd started. It's just a lot easier to make sure that I'm keeping everything balanced and that when I'm making changes, I am making them intentionally and I know what direction I actually want to take it in. So you can see that little color comp that I have up in the corner. I did make a few variations as I worked on this piece from that one. And uh, yeah, but just having it there provided this great template to work on. It took a lot of the, the ambiguity away from it. I didn't have to juggle in my mind where I thought every color was going to be because I had a map for it already. 
Sometimes I do also just have a little scrap of paper where I'll put down the colors that I've chosen in just a little swatch form rather than in necessarily the like thumbnail version of it. I prefer the thumbnail version, but but just having colors down to pick and choose from is also really helpful, especially when it's just a a small piece with a limited color palette that can be helpful to know, okay, well, this area is going to be this color. So if this area needs to be another color. So, so yes, I, I do really recommend having little swatches near you, things that you can draw specifically from that you know what colors are all the colors that are going to be in your piece. And probably the most important thing to picking your colors is actually picking the values, the, the underlying lights and darks of those colors. The eye actually reads the value first in a piece before it reads the color. And when you're working with pieces, you can get very arbitrary with the color placement, but if the values are correct, then it's going to read right. So that is the thing that needs to come first. And it is the thing that I really need to give more attention to. In this piece, I made a few errors with the value, things that didn't have as much contrast as I wanted it to. And what I really should have done, and this is something that I want to do moving forward, that I really need to make myself do moving forward, is to have not just the little color thumbnail, but also a value thumbnail where I can see where all of the darks are, all the lights are, all the midtones are, where everything ends up so that as I'm mixing the colors, I can make sure that they're also following that as well. So like I said, the, the hair ended up more mid-tone than I wanted. I wanted to have more contrast between her cape and her hair. And then finally to the background is this like sandwich between dark and light and dark. So I should have made her cape darker and her hair lighter. And that I think would have had a little bit stronger of a, of a read. But some other techniques that you can use, you can use it in a lot of different mediums too, but in watercolors, it's very easy is to use glazes to harmonize the colors. So I painted the ledge that she's sitting on this little wall in mostly grays at first, and it, it kind of stuck out. It had its own, its own color happening there, and it, it didn't really mesh with the background. It wasn't harmonizing with it. So I just took a glaze of that green color that I'd used in the background over top of everything on that wall. And that just immediately connected it with the background. It helped it read better. It still had a little bit more of a cool green. So it wasn't just like it was mimicking the background and being too repetitive, but it became a lot more harmonious with it. And that I think is a great thing to, to look for areas in your piece that could be connected with different areas and using glazes to connect those with just a little bit of extra color that'll bring it into a different family. Another technique that I like to use to figure out the color palette is actually to go and find color palettes that other artists have used in their works. I personally like to go outside of the type of art that I create. I like to go and look at very classical paintings and see how they break down their colors and their values and how to make sure that it it reads really strikingly. and. And they have some incredible atmospheres in these paintings. And that's what I, I want to bring into my own pieces. So that actually helps a lot when, when I'm feeling really stumped with what colors to use, or I just want to have this fresh infusion of ideas of new pieces and new colors to use. And yeah, I, I've been trying to do this a lot more actually, because I, I don't want to get too repetitive with my approach to really anything and color in particular is is something that I can have like the same solution for over and over again. And I, I don't want that. I want to be able to think of it differently. So, so this is a great tool to use to go and research and see how other artists have used throughout time as well as different, different art styles. And I think this piece in particular is a great example for me for being able to look at your work and finding things that you did well and finding things that you can improve on, especially with the colors. So, so for this one, there are a lot of mistakes that I made. I absolutely wish that I had controlled the values a little bit better and had an actual value map and stuck to it better. But I also think that the overall atmosphere I'm really happy with, I do think that there are areas that I could have been a little bit more harmonizing with so that it created a little bit more of an atmosphere. Like there's actually this strong green lighting, but yeah, that's that I think is really what it is about being an artist is that you make a piece of artwork and then you can sit down and think, 
well, what did I do good? What did I do not as good? And what can I take away to the next piece when I'm working on something new? And this one was really insightful for me. There were a lot of things that I realized that I've been kind of not focusing on for the last little while. And usually they end up okay, but it's, it's on pieces like this where it was really obviously different from what I had in my mind that it really opens up those doors to focus on them in the future, like the values. But that's it for today. I do have this little mini painting available at my shop. There's a link in the description that'll take you there. I also have a link to my Patreon, which is a great way to help support the artwork that I do in this channel. I am extremely grateful to everyone who's a patron over there. And I also have a link to all the tools that I use to create this painting down in the description as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back next week with another video. So I'll see you then. Bye.